Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to fit a lock on your bathroom door using one of these, a brass bolt thumb turn kit. These things are a great alternative to the more brutal looking ugly door bolts like that and they're really not as difficult to fit as you might think. So in today's toolkit we've got the brass bolt thumb turn kit itself, we've got an electric drill with two drill bits, 16mm diameter and 10mm diameter, we've got a hammer and a chisel, this is um, this chisel is three quarters of an inch, about 19mm wide, I've got an adjustable square, a braddle and a little bit of blue tack. And finally you need a hacksaw, it doesn't need to be anything like as heavy duty as this, it could be more like that because all we're doing here is we're cutting very soft brass. Full details of all the tools that I've used in today's toolkit will be available in the description at the end of the video. You look at one of these things and you think, wow, this is going to be really involved in installing one of these, but I'm going to show you right now that actually it's a really simple thing to do. So, taking a look at what comes in the brass thumb turn kit, we've got the bolt itself, we've got the thumb turn, that inserts in there like that. We've got the little brass plate that goes in the door frame. We've got six screws. And then it also comes with this. That goes on the outside of the door so that you can operate the door from outside. I guess this is a good idea when you've got young children. Uh, you don't need to take the door off to do this, but, but it's a good idea to secure it, stop it moving. So I'm putting this little wedge under the door just to stop it moving around, but you can use a book or anything like that. First thing we've got to decide is where we're going to position the lock on the door. There's no real rules on this. It's kind of wherever you wherever you think it looks best, whether it's most accessible. For me, I've got a hollow core door here, so I'm positioning it reasonably close to the door handle because I don't know how far the wooden filler piece extends past the handle. And I'm going to position mine slightly above the door handle, somewhere there. So I'm just going to draw a little line with my adjustable square. I want to get this line as central as possible. My door is 35mm wide, so that's 17 and a half millimeters to the center. So that's the center line there. So that's the point we're going to drill. Okay, putting my 16 millimeter drill bit into the drill. There's no point going any further than I need to into the door. So I've put a little bit of duct tape on the drill bit just to show me where to stop drilling. Now I'm going to carefully place the drill bit up to the point that I made a minute ago, push in a little bit, and then I'm going to start drilling. As you drill, you want to try and keep the drill bit as straight as you can. See, I'm demonstrating it there with my square. Also, you want the drill bit to be as close as you can parallel to the door, because if you start deviating like this, the danger is your drill bit could start heading towards the, the edge of the door. So you want to try and keep it as straight and level as you can while you're drilling. So it's now brushing the, the front of the door, so that means I've got I've gone far enough in. It's a good idea at this point to get a vacuum out and just hoover out the wood shavings from the hole. So then you can just insert the lock into the door just to check it's moving freely and the diameter of the hole you've drilled is wide enough. So now I'm going to fully insert the lock into the door, making sure it's level, and I'm going to mark with a pencil the area that we've got to rebate into the door. I use a propelling pencil quite a lot for this sort of job, but the adjustable squares also come with, a lot of them come with this removable, it's almost like a sort of braddle spike, and a lot of joiners like to use these because it gives you a very, well it does two jobs actually, it gives you a really accurate line, but it also scores the paintwork so that when you start chiseling away, you're not going to damage the surrounding paintwork. So I can remove that now, and that reveals the area that we've got to remove with the chisel. So we've got to remove approximately two millimeters from the front. So I've got my 90 millimeter wide wood chisel, and I'm now just going to very gently tap around on the marks that I've just made on the door. 
If you've got a wider wood chisel, you can now use that. Or alternatively, don't worry if you've only got one chisel, you can just very gradually go around like, like this. The key thing with a job like this, with chiseling, particularly if you haven't done it much before, is patience. If you rush it, you will do a bad job, but if you're just very careful and very precise, chances are you'll end up with a really lovely clean finish. Right, what I'm going to do now, very gently tap approximately two millimetres in these small sections because these are the bits we're going to be removing and by doing this you make it easier to remove the wood. Okay now I'm just going to very again very gently work on this area that needs to be removed. And the way I'm going to do this is place a chisel like this and then I'm just very gently tapping it from underneath with a hammer. I'm going to put the bolt back in just to see how it's fitting. It's not quite fitting in yet, so that just tells me I'm a little bit tight here. I'm just going to remove a little bit more from the edge. Okay, I've just done a little bit of adjustment and now that fits in beautifully. So the next step is to mark the position of the uh, thumb screw on the side of the door and this is a really easy thing to do. To do this what I do is I position the bolt next to where it's going to be inserted into the door making sure it's as straight as possible i.e. not like this and then when I'm happy with the position of it I'm simply going to insert the thumb screw into the bolt and press in against the door to make an imprint. And that is the point where I need to drill. I'm going to use a 10mm diameter drill bit to drill the hole for the handle. It doesn't have to be 10mm, as long as it's wider in diameter than the thumb turn itself you'll be fine. Right, at this point you've got two options. You can either cut down the thumb screw like I've done here, so that when it's inserted into the door you don't see anything on the other side. I've done this in a couple of the rooms in the house. Or, if you've got young children and you're worried about being able to get access into the bathroom, it's, it might be a good idea to install this, this screw device on the outside of the door that enables you to unlock the door from the outside as well as the inside. I'll show you how to do that now. But just like I did on the inside of the door, I'm lining up the bolt as if it was inserted in the door and then I'm just pressing the thumb turn through and making a mark on the outside of the door. And now with the 16mm drill bit again, I'm going to go through into... So I've just got to trim off about 5mm from the screw thread, which I've just done with a hacksaw. Now we can insert the screw and the brass, brass base plate and just check it works. That looks pretty good. It's probably a good idea to screw in the, the bolt itself first before you screw in the thumb turn just to make sure that it's in its final position. So I'm going to do that now. I am going to drill a pilot hole. because the screws that come with these kits are brass, they're very soft, you can wreck the head really easily. So by drilling a pilot hole the screw will go in much easier. You can either use an electric screwdriver like this, if you haven't got one, a manual screwdriver is absolutely fine. Now with a bradle I'm just going to make a little imprint so that I drill in the right place. Okay, so we're making good progress. 
The bolt and the front um, are now being installed. And all we've got to do now is install the rebated mortise section on the frame of the door. So now I've got to work out where to drill the hole in the door frame so that when the bolt goes in, it locks the door. Now sometimes these bolts come with a, with a little sharp point on so that you can literally just screw the bolt and make a mark on the door frame so that you know exactly where to drill. Unfortunately, this brass one doesn't have one of those. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can measure it or I'm going to try something a little bit more creative. Save me the hassle of having to do that. I'm going to get a piece of blue tack, positioning it in the middle of the bolt and I'm going to get a black marker pen. I'm going to make a, a mark in the middle of the blue tack and then I'm going to quickly close the door and squidge the blue tack onto the door frame. When I open that now, we'll have a nice mark. Let's have a look. Perfect, look at that. So that is the centre line of the hole that we've got to drill for the bolt. So we've got, we've got a bit more drilling to do now, but first we're going to mark the position of the face plate exactly as we did before for the thumb turn section on the door. That's the section we've got to remove in the middle. I'm going to use the same drill bit, I only need to drill one hole. And now, exactly as I did before, I'm going to score around the edge with a little tool that comes in the adjustable square. And I'm going to gently chisel the outline onto the frame. Again, as before, I'm just going to mark a few points down the area that we've got to rebate. And then again, as before, I'm going to gently tap it, tap it out. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Got a pilot hole again. And there we go, that's in place. So now it's the final moment of truth. The lock fits perfectly because of that little technique I showed you with the blue tack, and we've got ourselves a new door lock. So, I really hope you found today's video useful and that it's made you realise that there really isn't any magic or anything to be feared about fitting one of these thumb turn kits. As long as you've got the right tools and you take your time, it's something you can easily achieve, no matter what previous experience that you've got working with drills and chisels. If you found today's video useful, it'd be great if you could click on the like button below my video. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here. And if you do subscribe, make sure you click on the bell notification icon below the subscribe button so that you get notified when I upload new videos.